A, I've been talking about raw milk a lot lately, and because of that, I'm getting some questions. One of them that comes up a lot is, but look at how many deaths there have been from raw milk compared to about the same number from pasteurized milk. So they must be equally dangerous, right? So here's the thing. That's an apples to oranges comparison, right? Because nearly all the dairy used in the US is pasteurized, right? So if you have about the same number of problems from a very, very tiny amount of raw milk and a very large amount of pasteurized milk, that tells you something about the raw milk. We don't have great numbers for how much raw versus pasteurized is used in the US right now because most of the raw milk is happening under the table. But let's say 5%. 5% of the U.S. dairy being consumed being raw would be really generous. That's probably less than 1% or even less than half a percent. Just for a little comparison, France is the world capital of raw milk cheese, and only 18% of their cheese comes from raw milk. The world capital of raw milk cheese, less than a fifth of their cheese, is raw milk, and then cheese itself is a small part of their total dairy consumption. Even in France, the vast majority of dairy is pasteurized. So to make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison that accounts for how little of the milk in the U.S. Uh, being used as raw, multiply those raw milk stats by at least 20. 100 to 200 might be more accurate. The amount of pasteurized milk in the U.S. being used is at least 20 times the amount of raw milk. It might be more like 100 times or 200 times. So to get an idea of the risk factor, just, just do a quick little uh, back of the envelope math. Just mentally multiply the raw milk uh, casualty stats you see and multiply that by 20 or 100 or 200 to get an idea of what it would look like if dairy all moved to raw. Also, this is only for generic food poisoning from raw milk. Things like E. coli, salmonella, Campylobacter, listeria, those bacteria all come basically from feces. That could be from cows, from rodents, from people who didn't wash their hands. So these things can contaminate milk either in the barn during milking or anywhere else in the handling process. But raw milk can give you more infections that you can't get just from poop. You can also get tuberculosis. You can get brucellosis. Someone in Slovenia got a viral encephalitis that normally you can only get from being bitten by ticks. Uh, got it from raw milk. So the, these things are not just food poisoning. They are long-term chronic illnesses. Tuberculosis, brucellosis, uh, encephalitis. These are long-term. They're chronic. They are painful and debilitating and very expensive to treat, even when you do have the best medical care in the world. These infections are also really good at setting you up for chronic illnesses. You know, think long COVID. Even after you cover from the disease itself, you still have a long-term syndrome afterwards. These infections you can pick up from raw milk are really, really good at doing that. And also, I have to say, a little tickled when people bring up the, the raw data for for raw milk versus pasteurized. This is how many people go to the hospital, how many people were killed. So they'll get those raw numbers and they'll say, someone needs to math this out so we can find out what the risk level really is for raw versus pasteurized. And people will say that like it's a new idea that no scientist ever thought of. That's literally what scientists do all day. The science nerds already did the math and uh, that's, that's why they keep telling everybody raw milk is a bad idea. You have to you have to have people drinking 20 or 100 or 200 times more pasteurized milk to get the same number of illnesses and sicknesses and hospitalizations and death as you do to to get that from raw milk. That's why they say avoid raw milk. Raw milk Q&A time. So another question people have is, let's just use good hygiene standards like they do in Europe. They use raw milk all the time in Europe and they're safe and it's fine over there. Okay, uh, no. <laughs> France is the world capital of raw milk cheese. Over four fifths of their cheese is made from pasteurized milk, right? So it's, it's a pretty small supply even of French cheese that's made from raw milk cheese. And they have very high standards and France still has raw milk outbreaks all the time. There have been two pretty big ones just in the last year. I will drop links for them. It's so funny to me how people say like, oh, they do it in Europe and they don't have any problems. That's how you can tell people don't read the news in Europe. They have outbreaks like all the time and they have to do recalls all the time. It's also understood in Europe that raw milk cheese is, it's kind of like fugu, you know, like the, um, the puffer fish they eat in Japan. Yes, it's delicious, but it's also kind of dangerous. So it's understood in Europe that raw milk cheese is a treat for adults. You don't give it to small children. You don't have it if you're elderly, sick, immunocompromised, pregnant. That's part of the culture and the custom that goes along with uh, enjoying raw milk cheese. And also they make it into cheese because the fermentation, the low pH, and adding salt are going to kill off those bacteria. That's why people traditionally turn milk into cheese. So even with extraordinarily high hygiene standards in Europe, they still have outbreaks. There is no amount of doing extra good hygiene that is going to change the fact that a cow's udder is right under its poop chute. In Europe, they know that. That's why they also restrict who eats the cheese. If we're going to adopt the raw milk culture, we need to also adopt the raw milk precautions. <sighs> and understanding that it's risky and not feeding it straight to small children while we have a medical system that's in shambles. Okay, bye.